Sounds are good. All right, here at uh, Benjamin Ray here with Shay Yun from Elevate Cannabis. How you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing today, Ben? Doing excellent. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. You know, as we were talking a little bit ago, uh, and I've been reading a lot of your stuff, and uh, you know, just seeing all your posts about leadership, and I mean, you're, you're doing an amazing job. And I'm really fortunate to have you on this show. And I especially like the fact that you've gone from COE to CEO, right? the, the chief of everything to the chief executive officer. I mean, that's that's a, a, a real human spirit thing that I, I just love. I wanted to uh, to tell people here that you you immigrate from, from uh, Nigeria at five years old, uh, and now you're the youngest African-American multi-state operator in the cannabis space. And you, you've had an amazing path, amazing journey, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of yours, too, Ben. Uh, your words of encouragement is always welcome and it's, it's very uplifting. So uh, thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, thank you for having me. All right. Well, we're going to dig right into it here. I've got some questions for you. And it's, it's you know, we're going to really talk about the human side of this business. You know, there's a lot online that people can find out about your, your dispensaries. But I want to talk about the leadership and human part. And you've said before that you you really double down on positivity of the human spirit. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I think the cannabis industry, you have a lot of backstabbing. You have a lot of things that don't, partnerships that fail. It's just business in general. But how do you overcome those things when things don't go right? Um, and one of the biggest things I tell people is negotiate your uh, honeymoon. While, while you negotiate your honeymoon, negotiate your divorce at the same time. Uh, because uh, I think the biggest thing, we, we both talk about this, is taking 100 percent accountability yeah that's it uh, by taking 100 percent accountability have you done the due diligence to understand the partner that you're looking to get married to um, have you asked probing questions do you know about their past history like you know there's so many things that we could play, blame other people for, for bad you know business deals uh, but at the same time one of the biggest things i've done is you know i look at myself and say what could i have done better in that that situation right and 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 i treat that in my company like we, we treat people with you know like see person understand that to be understood um so going back to just always like taking 100 percent accountability and treating people the way you would want to be treated you know i i think there there are a lot of people who don't take responsibility and i've seen that in the space as well there it's always someone else's problem, you know, or or somebody else did something and not taking 100% responsibility. And, you know, that's kind of a, a common theme on the show. I was talking to a guy yesterday, uh, Chris Laping, about that. And it, it really makes a big, big difference when you understand that, you know, everything that you do is a choice and everything matters, then it's a big deal to take responsibility, wh whether it's positive or negative. And in the cannabis industry, I don't see a lot of that. I haven't seen a lot of it. It's, it's getting, it's evolving, obviously, and it's getting a lot better. But I, I like what you're saying about you really need to know whom you're working with and make sure that it's for the long term. Yeah, and, and we also do a lot of give back, like treat everyone like gold. Um, positivity uh, stem from our core value, love, hustle, empathy, um, and so forth. And so we really embody what we stand for. Uh, one of the things that we do in our dispensaries is we have uh, Treat Everyone Like Gold card where our customers come in, they write positive words of affirmation, and we go out and we pass it out to random strangers. Our philosophy is, believe is, everyone is going through something. I don't yeah. care who you are. Everyone has a battle that they're facing. And when you come to my dispensary and you spend money, you could go anywhere else, but you decided to come to Elevate Cannabis. My job is to treat you like royalty. Whether you come in to $5 to $30, $30 to $500, it doesn't really matter to us. It's more of, um, you know, there's so many, the, the market in different states are very saturated, as you know, in Oregon is a saturated market. Oklahoma is a saturated market due to the fact there's no cap on licenses. So for a customer to want to come shop at your dispensary, to me, it's, uh, it shows that they care. They want to see you survive. Um, the storm, 
Um, and, you know, we, we give back to our community. We do food drives. Uh, we go out. We give, uh, you know, we partner up with the University of Oregon. Uh, we set up booth uh, before COVID-19 took place. And, uh, and we did different activities to give back to the people that give to us. So outside of treating our customer like gold, we also treat our employees like gold, too. Hmm. Well, that's kind of your your philosophy of giving everyone space to be authentic. So whether it's your customers, your partners, uh, employee staff, yourself, if you can be authentic and you can give everyone the space to do that, you're going to have a, a much more, I guess, genuine experience all the way through and, and full of truth, too. 100%. One hundred percent, and our our and within our company, we believe from you know we we promote from within. Um, that's another positive trait of ours. Like I'd rather promote from within. We you know we pay living wages uh, to our employees, so it's not a get rich for us. It's it's really purpose for us, um, and really paving way for young generations uh, of entrepreneurs, of cannabis entrepreneurs, to be authentic, to understand that making a mistake is not a bad thing, failure is not a bad thing, giving up is what's bad you know failure is 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 a is a is an opportunity to start with more intelligent you know start over but not when you start over you have more intelligent to base your decision off of so yeah yeah i mean it, it's kind of like the the saying you either win or you learn you know so failure is not really you know when when you say failure is not an option really what that means is you're not going to just accept failure as something negative that happened to you that is going to stop you it's just an opportunity. And that, you know, that I, I'm, I was really impressed this past year, what you've done to really use the hardships as a driver for potential and opportunity. And that's been a theme kind of in your in your life. But I really like what you're doing now with the growth in these dispensaries. So how has that, how has COVID affected you? And what have you done then to maximize the potential and opportunity? Yeah, we, we didn't, I didn't let COVID-19 stop me while um, it, it was just, while everybody was sleeping at home and, you know, COVID-19 was affecting them, I doubled down and I hustled harder. Um, in 2019, we, uh, our landlord refused to, re, um, re, you know, basically uh, renew our lease in Eugene, Oregon, due to the fact that she was selling um, her building to a, um, to a, a different party. And while this party went out to get a bank loan, the bank refused to give them money due to the fact that there was a cannabis dispensary there. So we had 30 days to, to basically find a new location. And as you know, there's buffer, there's zoning, there's restrictions on where you can place your dispensary. So it was a shit show, right? Yeah. But guess what? There's no excuses. Nobody's going to hold your hand and cry with you. Nobody's going to, everybody's going to say sorry, but who cares? I'm not here to get you sorry. I need, yeah. I need solution and I need action. So I'm not going to look at nobody else. I'm going to, uh, you know, I can feel pity for myself. So when less than 30 days, we found a, a higher traffic location in downtown Eugene. And while COVID-19 took place, I was building out my dispensary with my hand. I, as you said earlier, I was a COE. I was a chief of everything. Yeah. So we opened in 2017, closed in April 2019, and we reopened in um, in 2020 in the midst of the pandemic in June. Um, That's and amazing. How we did that? Thank you. So we actually most of our assets got turned on in 2020. So while everything was going on, the disaster was happening. We were having construction done in Athol, Massachusetts. Um, we were having, I built out my Eugene, Oregon location with my hand. I'm proud of myself. I can say yeah. that. Um, I did whatever it took to make sure we got open. And I just didn't feel bad for myself. I, I, I tell myself, you know, the world, 100% accountability. I refuse to lose. And the only way I can lose is if I lose. Like every decision I make, I analyze it. I see that, like, how could I have done better? Um, what could I have learned in this negotiation deal? What could I have pulled back on? And, and everything is a lesson, and, and I accept everything. My flaws, I'm not perfect. I've made some terrible uh, business deal. I've failed more times than I've succeeded. But at the end of the day, um, all my failures became lessons. I was able to observe them and, and just uh, look at how I could have done better. That's, uh, that's excellent. I mean, that's really good. That's good advice, great advice for young entrepreneurs. What what else would you tell to them if they're starting out either in this business or any business for that matter as a young entrepreneur? What's your 
your recommendations and advice to them? Uh, negotiate as you negotiate your honeymoon, negotiate your divorce. I, I think a lot of people are very scared to negotiate. Like, hey, if we don't agree on this, here's the pathway forward. Hmm. If this doesn't happen, here's what's going to happen. Here's the consequences associated to your action. And because we don't set those proper expectations, there is no way that you can then hold somebody accountable when they don't 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 do their part. Um, mm. So I think a lot of people go and think that everything is rosy. And look, every, I don't blame people when they like, you know, do things to portray because at the end of the day, everyone is going to look out for number one. Not everyone has. I can't say the way I do business. That's how everyone should do business. I don't care about that. That's not that's not it. That's why we have contracts. Mm. I can't rely and say, oh, I have integrity. This person should have integrity. That I don't like if we're going to do business, right, to make sure that, you know, if you give someone that if there was a, a hundred million dollars just open for someone to just walk in and, and most humans just cash, just sitting there, most humans will steal that money. Logical humans, a hundred million dollars <laughs> just yeah. sitting there. Most humans, I don't care who you are, you, you're giving them the opportunity. They're going to steal that money. Right. So in order to put them in a difficult position, don't put them in that position. Mm. Right. So by setting proper expectation, by having terms and conditions and by having consequences associated to actions, we're able to then there's no hard feelings. I'm I'm a really nice guy. I love heavy. But you ask anyone on my team, I set proper expectation. So if I let you go, you understand that what you did went out of our agreement hmm. there's no ifs and buts so it's not it. just so a, a contractual agreement you're talking about actively seeking conflict as as a positive thing so if somebody you know is in if they're working with you things aren't going that well you're not going to avoid that and just get rid of them you're going to sit down you're going to talk to them about what what the challenges are so that they can improve and if it doesn't work out you're going to tell them why it didn't work out so that they can Absolutely. do better in the next position or whatever that is Absolutely. it's coach train and nurture coach train and nurture if i coached you i trained you and i'm nurturing you to be the best version of yourself and we're still not getting to the point where we need um then it's, 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 the, it's, it's my organization is not for you and there's no hard feeling. I, I hope you find an organization that best fits your style and what you need. But I'm not my my COO. She calls me and and be like, you know, she 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 goes in. She's mm -hmm. like, Shane, I don't like this, this, and this. I'm like, okay, I see where you're coming from because our philosophy seek first to understand. I'm not better than anybody. I like in my organization. I need you to be able to tell your store manager when he's messing up and he's not acting in in in, in our a core values mm -hmm. at all. Like that that that's it. Like if we are going to win, we can't say one person is important as somebody else because everybody's important. Without the right. blood tenders, there's no way we can service our customers. Without store managers, there's no way operations can really get done on a mastery level. So everyone plays a key component in making making sure the business is functioning the way it needs to. So when there is conflict, when there is miscommunication, we have to then sit down and have that dialogue and then have that open dialogue like, hey, here's my perspective on this. And a lot of time it's just perspective. It's like, mm. you see this, but this person intention was this is, 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 and then a lot of people get butt hurt and they're mad. Oh my God, he said this, or, this, but, but you don't even know where he was coming from. You don't know if this person had a bad day, their mom just passed away. You, there's so many scenarios that could happen. And, and we give the freedom for our employees to express themselves because if I don't know what's going on, how can I help? How can right. I, it, it is a matter together? of, of helping them to articulate what the challenges are so that you can help. I mean, it it truly is that. I mean, I, it reminded me, you know, one time I was in, a, there was a, a board meeting and I was working with the board, kind of counseling them. And we were talking about, you know, some solutions and everyone was kind of shaking their head like this. They're all saying, yeah, these are great. Everyone was agreeing with one another, you know, like, like 10 different people. And as people were walking out the door, 
I saw them shaking their head and said, there's no way I'm going to do that. There's no way I'm going to agree to that. You know, I'm thinking like, what is going on here? You know, so, you know, it's kind of the Jim Peters philosophy of healthy debate. And really what that means is you must, you must, you know, encourage people to speak their mind. It's not good or bad. It's just what you need to do. Otherwise, you're going to have people with their own agenda and you're going to get miscommunication and you're going to run into challenges along the way. The cannabis industry has the highest turnover. An average employee's work for a cannabis um, a, a company for about two to three months. Wow. And they're looking for, yeah, then they're looking for new employees. Um, you know, right now, like Elevate, you know, turnover rate is currently none, but I'm happy about that, right? But, yeah. you know, at the same time, I'm, I, even if we have a turnover rate, my goal is there that when we do have that, they're getting promoted to a higher position. They're making more money. If someone do decide to leave our organization, I don't get mad about that. It's more like if this is a better opportunity for you, your family, I'm happy for you, right? But for me, my job as a CEO, chief executive officer is one, to uh, go out, raise capital, make sure we're profitable, and put people in the best position to let their light shine. So mm. I want to continue to create value for my employees to make them want to stay. Right now, Elevate has three dispensary in the state of Massachusetts. We have a dispensary in Eugene, Oregon. We have states that we're working right now on to get active, right? And right now, we have not raised as much capital as big corporations. We're doing this based on just the revenue, based on uh, profits from our stores and 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 strategically placing them in. in the, now, if we go out and eventually we're bringing on a VP of growth to go out and 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 go help raise capital because i know my strength and i understand my weakness so by sticking to my strength and bringing people that are way smarter than me and things that i'm not really great at and i'm not ashamed of it right and bringing them on to really help us really scale our organization i think we have a lot of great things going on and we want to bring on um you know people investors that are like-minded that think the same way and and are looking for growth opportunity. I think we're we're a, we're a company to to look out for. So you're not looking for investors who kind of say, "I want to dabble in this" or "I want to get my feet wet." You want people who are all in, whom you 100% agree with, and they see the value in you, and they're willing to support that. Uh, absolutely. So even if the people that, that that put money up for for me, for example, right. Um, it's more about terms and condition within the papers, right? Because everyone could say one thing, but their feelings could be something else, right? We do want investors that do truly believe in our in our core value, believe in what we're in, but they don't have to be active in the business, right? Yeah. I think for us is we are we already have a core team. We just need someone that that can bring in that capital to say, I see the vision and I see how I can make money. Right. We mm -hmm. want to make our investors money. Right. So at yeah. the end, end of the day, it's like, OK, look, we have assets. We're growing. And now we're looking to raise capital. Here's the value for you, because I, I never believe in, oh, I'm going to, you know, like I, I just want. How do I benefit? How do this person benefit? I want a win win situation, because if, we, if it's not a win win situation, why screw somebody um, in a business deal? Um, I just feel like karma is a and it's going to come back, right? It's just yeah, more yeah. like principles. It's it just, it's just principle wise. I want win-win situation. If we can get to a win-win situation where our investors understand where, what we're about and they feel comfortable with it, whether they're about it or not, as long as they understand this is what we're about, this is the direction that we're going. If you would like to invest and make money, let's do it. If right. not, that's okay. It's okay. Right. Right. Hey, look, if for me, you don't have to believe in my philosophy to invest in my company because I think everyone has different roles, different roles. As long as the day we understand where we're at and you understand this is the company philosophy, here's what you get from investing to us. What you do in your personal life has nothing to do with me personally, right? Like, that's mm -hmm. how I feel about it because you, everybody can play a facade and act like we're holier than thou. I'm not holier than thou. I, I make mistakes <laughs> bunch of mistakes right so i'm i and and i feel like it's human you know that's i mean it's 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 an amazing philosophy and it's great to to have the ability then to say 
very clearly what you want and what you're looking for. That's great. Yeah. I've got a question uh, from an article, and, and I've seen it before in you about getting 1% uh, better every day. Yesterday, when I was talking with uh, Chris Lapian, we were talking about that exact same thing that is 37% better over the year. So talk to me about your 1% philosophy. Yeah, I, I try to consistently educate myself on the cannabis industry. I'm a huge fan of reading. I'm a huge fan of self-assessment. I, I look at each day as a day to improve myself. Like, what could I have done better? Um, you know, how should I have talked less? When should I have spoken? You know, um, so it's it just not quick to anger. Um, and then accepting my flaws. Say, okay, this is what I'm doing bad. This is what I need to improve on. This is where I need help at. And how can I get that help? Um, so just understanding that I'm an imperfect being that's looking to get better every day. Uh, and, it's great. And yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's showing. It's showing. I mean, I can see your growth and it's a it's an amazing path. And I, I know you're only beginning the journey. Thank you. Thank you. Dad. Yeah. So so let's say uh, let's let's just go five years down the road in terms of uh, being a multi-state operator. What do you see for the industry and more specifically for Elevate Cannabis? Well, where are you going? We want to be a publicly traded company. We're, we're positioning ourselves. We want to continue to add value. We want to continue to go out and win license in hard states um, and be continue to be a strategic company. We want to be a transparent company. We want, to, we, we want to continue to help in the social equity battle to make sure we see more POCs within the cannabis industry. And right now, even though we're, we're, we're little, we, pass, we, we, we pack a big punch. And um, we, we've been helping um, a lot of state with social equity legalization and what that looks like, what has worked in states and what hasn't worked in states. Um, and we're super proud of that. And we believe that once we are continuing to you know, get an injection of capital, um, I think that the sky's the limit for us. So if somebody wants to get a hold of you, let's say it's an investor. Do you have a prospectus? I mean, how would they get a hold of you? You have a pitch book. What do you t tell me what you would need, you know, for people to get a hold of you? Yeah, so um, you can find, you can email me at Sheun, S E U N, at elevate, E L E V number eight, cannabis, C A N N A B I S dot com. Um, you can also uh, message me on LinkedIn. Um, our goal, we, we see that the cannabis industry uh, is changing with the presidential election um, that just took place. Um, we see that cannabis federal legalization is actually around the corner. I don't think the, right now the more act would, would, would pass in the Senate right now, uh, but I do feel um, strongly that within the next two to three years, um, we're going to see more states legalize cannabis. Uh, uh, we're going to see that, you know, due to COVID-19, um, and um, uh, the tax cuts uh, that's been associated to different state losing revenue, we're going to see that they're going to tap into different sources of revenue. And I believe that cannabis is going to be one of the key um, revenue generators for the cities and states that are looking to find ways to make up for the revenue they've lost around COVID-19. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, where are your dispensaries exactly? If someone wants to come, what, what towns and where can they find them? Yes, yeah, so we have a dispensary right now in Athol, Massachusetts, Orange, and Williamstown. Our strategy, we know I'm not balling like big multi-state operator. I'm a small mom and pop business. So instead of trying to, uh, you know, compete with, uh, you know, uh, spending $100,000 a month on, on lease and waiting for three years over a three year period, we strategically place our dispensary on border towns. Um, one of our store is on the border of uh, New York. Um, and one of our stores on border uh, Vermont and New Hampshire. Uh, and we have a store in Eugene, Oregon uh, by the University of Oregon campus. Um, and you could, and anytime you can find us on elevatecanvas.com, check out our website, um, go to locations and uh, give you more details. That's great. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks for taking the time with me today. Uh, any, any last words? Stay elevated. Stay elevated. All right. Well, thanks. I, I look forward to seeing your journey and we'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Have a great day, man. You too. Thank you for having me on. Thank you.